Beneath the surface of our DNA lies an extraordinary story, a story that features Neanderthals. If you were to peer into your genes, you might find traces of their legacy, as much as 1-2% to for most people of European and Asian descent. But what does this mean, and why do some populations carry no such inheritance? The tale begins around 400,000 years ago, when Neanderthals thrived in Europe and Western Asia. They faced the harsh environments of Ice Age Europe with resilience, developing characteristics like robust physiques and adaptive immune systems. About 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, when Homo sapiens began to spread, the two human species shared overlapping territories, leading to moments of profound connection. Scientists have revealed that these encounters left marks in the DNA of modern-day humans, gifts of genetic material inherited from our Neanderthal forebears. The percentage of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans varies by geography. For individuals of European ancestry, as observed earlier, it generally sits between 1 and 2%, though in some cases even more. East Asians, however, have slightly higher percentages compared to Europeans, possibly influenced by additional interbreeding events after populations diverged. People of African descent, on the other hand, carry close to no Neanderthal DNA due to their ancestors remaining mostly isolated from Neanderthals in Africa. This heritage isn't just a relic of the past, it influences us even today. From traits like skin pigmentation and hair to immune system responses, Neanderthal genes have shaped key aspects of our biology. The story takes us back to when Homo sapiens began their migrations. Venturing into Eurasia, they encountered Neanderthals, who had already adapted to the icy landscapes of Europe and parts of Asia. Initially, these groups might have eyed each other cautiously, but over time, their encounters became closer, and in some cases, intimate. Genetic studies, particularly since the sequencing of the Neanderthal genome in 2010, have provided irrefutable evidence of these interactions. Archaeological discoveries have also painted parts of this picture. Fossil records from sites like the Denisova and Vindija caves point to shared occupations, tools, and even burial sequences in the same cultural layers. Some discoveries even suggest continued interbreeding events over thousands of years. In a way, we are connected not just to our parents or grandparents, but to a world of ancestors who walked the earth tens of thousands of years ago. But why does this legacy appear more prominently in some regions than others? The distribution of Neanderthal DNA across the globe is far from random. The key to understanding this map lies in the timeline of early Homo sapiens migrations to Europe and parts of Western Asia. Here, the two species overlapped for thousands of years, leading to interbreeding a genetic handshake that continues to echo in our genomes today. On the other hand, African populations, whose ancestors mostly stayed on the continent, exhibit little to no Neanderthal DNA. This absence is because Neanderthals never set foot in Africa, leaving its native populations genetically isolated from their influence. And why East Asians tend to have slightly higher percentages of Neanderthal DNA than Europeans? Scientists hypothesize this might be due to additional interbreeding events or bottlenecks that preserved the genetic contribution over generations. The challenges of surviving Ice Age Europe, with frigid air and limited sunlight, forced Neanderthals to evolve physical characteristics that increased their chances of survival. For example, certain Neanderthal genes tied to lighter skin may have evolved to help them produce more vitamin D in low light conditions, an adaptation that was passed to modern Europeans and Asians. Likewise, Neanderthal DNA linked to pigmentation might influence traits like hair color and curl patterns, though the full range of their hair hues remains a topic of scientific intrigue. But their contributions don't stop at complexion or texture. Neanderthal genetic variants are also connected to metabolism, impacting how efficiently people process fats and sugars. These traits likely gave Neanderthals an edge when food was scarce, storing energy quickly to survive long winters. Height, too, may carry Neanderthal notes. Variations tied to skeletal development could have influenced stature. Though Neanderthals themselves were shorter and stockier, these genes might have combined with modern human DNA to diversify the height spectrum we see today. In the early days, Neanderthals were portrayed as a slow-witted caveman, brandishing a crude spear. But that image did not hold up. Today, scientists are uncovering tantalizing hints that Neanderthal DNA may have influenced how we think, learn, and solve problems. Neanderthals weren't mere brute survivors of Ice Age Europe. Recent archaeological and genetic findings suggest these ancient humans developed tools, buried their dead, and possibly even had a sense of art. Their brains, though shaped differently compared to those of Homo sapiens, 
were comparable in size, adding complexity to debates around their cognitive capabilities. Could it be then that the 1-2% to of Neanderthal DNA most non-African populations carry includes traces of creativity, memory, or analytical thinking? Some studies have drawn connections between Neanderthal genetic variants and brain function. A 2020 analysis uncovered correlations between Neanderthal genes and modern humans' neurological features, such as synaptic plasticity, the brain's ability to adapt and reorganize. This adaptability may underpin traits linked to problem solving, adaptation to stress or creativity. Neanderthals were remarkable cold weather specialists, shaped by millennia of evolution in environments where warmth was a luxury. Their stocky builds, with shorter arms and legs, conserved heat more effectively, characteristics that contrast with the lanky frames of their African Homo sapiens cousins. Modern day studies have linked certain genetic variants inherited from Neanderthals to traits related to circadian rhythms. For example, these variants can affect how the body perceives light, altering the way melatonin, the hormone that regulates sleep, is released. Some of these genetic markers are associated with being more sensitive to light, an adaptation that would have been invaluable for Neanderthals in regions with limited daylight. By quickly adjusting to changes in seasonal light exposure, they could have maintained optimal sleep patterns year-round. Interestingly, these ancient adaptations might also explain why some people today experience issues like insomnia or disrupted sleep. For instance, certain Neanderthal genes are thought to influence susceptibility to modern sleep disorders, such as delayed sleep phase syndrome, where individuals may struggle to fall asleep at conventional times. Though we live in a world of artificial lighting and alarm clocks, our sleep wiring still bears traces of an ancient lifestyle tailored to the natural rhythms of the earth. Neanderthals may be long gone, but their genetic legacy lingers as a reminder of how deeply intertwined we are with our evolutionary past, even in something as simple and essential as a good night's rest. The Neanderthals and the Denisovans, archaic humans who lived thousands of years ago, both left traces of themselves in modern-day humans. While their genetic influences differ in scope and effect, Together, they paint a vivid picture of prehistoric survival, adaptation, and overlap. Neanderthals, the rugged survivors of Europe and Western Asia, and Denisovans, their enigmatic counterparts from farther east, lived in overlapping time periods but occupied distinct ecological niches. When Homo sapiens encountered these ancient humans, the encounters might have been brief but were clearly lasting. Scientists have discovered that genetic signatures of both Neanderthals and Denisovans remain in human populations today. Denisovans left a more targeted genetic imprint. Their DNA is most prominently found in populations from Melanesia, the Pacific Islands, and parts of Southeast Asia, where it accounts for up to 5-6% to of the genome in some individuals. Denisovan contributions are linked to high-altitude adaptation, as seen in Tibetans who inherited a Denisovan gene that helps them thrive in low oxygen environments. This dual inheritance is a testament to human adaptability and migration. Neanderthals and Denisovans may no longer walk among us, but their genetic echoes continue to shape who we are, bridging our ancient past with our present existence. The encounter between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons is another fascinating aspect of the Neanderthal saga. On the one side, Neanderthals, masters of Ice Age Europe, with their stocky builds and survival-tested ingenuity. On the other, the newly arrived Cro-Magnons are direct ancestors, with a flair for innovation and adaptability. For thousands of years, their worlds overlapped, giving rise to one of the most fascinating chapters in human history. The nature of this historic encounter is still debated, but evidence suggests a story blending coexistence, competition, and cultural exchange. The Cro-Magnons were Homo sapiens, anatomically modern humans, who entered Europe roughly 40,000 years ago. Neanderthals had been thriving there for over 300,000 years, honing survival skills that included making stone tools, hunting large game, and perhaps even engaging in symbolic behaviours like burial rituals. Archaeological finds show that the two species shared the same spaces for thousands of years. They hunted the same animals, competed for the same shelter, and navigated the same harsh environments. But it wasn't just a battle for resources. There are signs of shared knowledge as well. Some Cro-Magnon tools bear similarities to Neanderthal designs, suggesting that information may have flowed between the groups. Bone artifacts and engraved items hint at potential cultural exchanges that blurred the lines between competition and cooperation. The intimate nature of this interaction becomes even clearer with genetic evidence. 
DNA studies have confirmed that Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons interbred, leaving a lasting legacy in the genes of non-African modern humans. Yet the relationship was not without tension. The arrival of Cro-Magnons brought significant changes to the ecological landscape. Their advanced tools and group strategies allowed them to outcompete Neanderthals in hunting and resource gathering. The story of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons is not one of simple conquest or survival. It's a complex tale of contact and coexistence, where two worlds briefly touched before one faded into history. The extinction of the Neanderthals remains one of the most fascinating mysteries in human history. Once thriving throughout Europe and Western Asia, these hardy beings disappeared around 40,000 years ago, leaving behind little more than fossils and a genetic legacy carried by modern humans. Among the theories explaining their demise, one stands out for its eerie familiarity, a silent, invisible enemy brought by the arrival of Homo sapiens. Could the spread of disease have spelled the end for our ancient relatives? To set the scene, consider Europe 50,000 years ago, a continent dominated by Neanderthals who had adapted to cold climates, hunting large game with formidable efficiency. But as modern humans ventured into Neanderthal territory, they brought more than tools and innovations. They brought pathogens against which Neanderthals had no defense. Research into ancient DNA paints part of this picture. Modern humans whose immune systems had evolved in the tropical conditions likely carried bacteria and viruses that Neanderthals had never faced. Diseases such as tuberculosis, herpes, or respiratory infections could have spread rapidly through Neanderthal groups, weakening them and reducing their populations over time. For communities already surviving on the edge in harsh climates, even a small outbreak might have proven catastrophic. Conversely, Neanderthals might have carried diseases harmful to Homo sapiens. But archaeological records suggest that Homo sapiens emerged largely unscathed. This could reflect the broader genetic diversity of Homo sapiens, which gave them a stronger immune response and a better chance at survival when encountering these new threats. The pathogen hypothesis does not stand alone, and is often considered alongside other factors like environmental shifts and competition for resources. Yet it underscores a poignant reality of the Neanderthal's extinction, the unpredictable vulnerabilities of contact between species. Today, with fragments of Neanderthal DNA still influencing our immune systems, their story reminds us of the delicate balance between survival and extinction. Was it true disease that tipped the scale against them, or was it a culmination of pressures? Either way, the end of the Neanderthals marks one of Earth's great turning points, where the unseen hand of disease may have played a decisive and devastating role. Neanderthals have also left behind many enigmatic puzzles. These puzzles etched in stone and bone urge us to uncover the untold chapters of their story. Deep in the heart of France, hidden away in the dark recesses of Bruniquel Cave, lies one of the most extraordinary and perplexing clues to the cognitive abilities of Neanderthals. Discovered in 1990, this ancient site shattered long-held assumptions about the capacities of our extinct relatives, offering a rare glimpse into their ingenuity and potential for symbolic thought. What makes Bruniquel Cave remarkable isn't just its breathtaking age, but its evidence of deliberate construction. An enigmatic stone circle built by hands and minds we once underestimated. Located 330 metres deep inside the cave, the circular structures are composed of approximately 400 broken stalagmites. These stalagmites were methodically arranged into two concentric rings, with fractured pieces piled in an intentional fashion. Radiometric dating astonished researchers, revealing the formations to be around 176,000 years old. This staggering timeline predates the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe by more than 100,000 years. The conclusion was clear. The architects of this mysterious structure were Neanderthals. This discovery immediately challenged prior notions about Neanderthals as creatures of brute survival. Here was evidence pointing to advanced planning, cooperation, and manipulation of the environment far beyond simple practicality. Constructing the stone circle so deep within the cave required more than strength. It demanded foresight, teamwork, and the ability to adapt to the extreme darkness and limited space. Such an effort implies the use of fire to light their subterranean workspace, a detail confirmed by traces of charred material found within the circle. Yet the real enigma of the Brunichel cave isn't how it was built, but why. Researchers have proposed several theories, but certainty remains elusive. Some suggest the construction served practical purposes, a place where fires could provide light or warmth during brief excursions into the cave's depths. 
However, the level of intent displayed by the arrangement hints at something far deeper, perhaps symbolic or ritualistic in nature. Could this be evidence of a ceremonial space, a site of gathering and meaning for Neanderthals? If so, what might this tell us about their capacity for symbolic thought, and their understanding of the world around them? Another mystery that still puzzles scientists was found in the Divya Babe Cave in Slovenia in 1995, the so-called Neanderthal flute, which has been the centre of profound scientific fascination and debate. Is it evidence of Neanderthal musicality, or is its origin far less intentional? The object in question is a fragment of a juvenile cave bear's femur, pierced by evenly spaced holes. Radiometrically dated to 43,000 to 60,000 years ago, its age aligns closely with the Neanderthal occupation of the area, well before Homo sapiens walked those lands. The artifact immediately set imaginations alight, suggesting a startling possibility. Neanderthals may have been making music tens of thousands of years ago. To create a flute, after all, is not merely to craft a tool, but to engage in abstract thought, foster creativity, and likely share moments of connection through sound. The distribution of holes in the bone aligns closely with the spacing required to produce musical notes, leading some researchers to conclude that this was no accident. If functional as a flute, it unveils a depth of cognitive complexity often denied to Neanderthals. Music itself, though often dismissed as frivolous, plays a vital role in culture. It builds social bonds, marks ceremonies, and even conveys emotions words cannot express. However compelling this narrative may be, the bone flute is not without its controversies. Some anthropologists and paleontologists challenge the claim that the holes were crafted intentionally. They argue that the holes resulted from animal bites rather than Neanderthal ingenuity. For instance, hyenas are known to gnaw on bones in ways that could leave behind similarly spaced punctures. The skeptics also point to the lack of additional evidence of Neanderthal instruments as a reason for caution in interpreting this single find as evidence of musical traditions. In the end, we can say that the presence of Neanderthal DNA tells a silent story in the cells of millions. Their history speaks of survival, of encounters between two worlds that shared and shaped one another. It speaks of a humanity that is far older and richer than we once believed, one that stretches back to those quiet firelit nights when music might have echoed in a dark cave, or stones were carefully arranged in a circle, not for shelter, but for something intangible, something meaningful. 